when you hear that, you know something's about to happen. Uh, that's a four-bar introduction. Uh, actually, it's uh, it comes out of the 12th Street Rag. But um, when you're a uh, pianist, especially a stride pianist or or, or a traditional jazz uh, pianist in any kind of a group, chances are that at some point the leader of the group is uh, going to announce a tune, and then he's going to turn to you and say, "Okay." give me four bars or give me eight bars and he'll count it off and then you have to come up with something so let's just talk about a few variations that you can use so you don't end up playing the introduction to the 12th street rag all the time um, when you have a four bar introduction say you're doing um, you're going to introduce uh, a piece the band's going to play Avalon for example uh, well you start out and he wants four bars. You're going to start out with the one chord for a bar, and the one diminished, and then the two seven, and then the five seven, and then hopefully the band will come in. Like if you go. But if the band doesn't come in, then you got to go around the world again. You got to play that uh, again. Okay, so you have to have um, the ability to come up with a, a semi-original but fairly obvious four-bar introduction so that in case the other musicians aren't counting along with you, uh, that they'll get a pretty clear picture of when they should come in. And if they don't come in, just keep playing. Don't stop. Keep uh, play another four bars until if it goes around two or three times, you might have to go back to... Now, some introductions, uh, if you find that uh, you're in a band where uh, you're having to uh, set up just about every tune with an introduction, you don't want to play the same thing all the time. Instead of doing the uh, one and the diminished and the two, seven and the five, you might want to go down like in, like in, whole, in whole steps. Or you might want to go up. There's four bars. If they don't come in, do it again. Uh, you can pretty much, uh, as long as you end up on the 5 7 chord at the end of your introduction, uh, providing that the tune begins on either the 1 chord or the 5 7 chord, um, you're in pretty good shape. Now, if the tune begins on the one chord, uh, say uh, you're doing China Boy. Okay, uh, the five seven chord sets up the one chord. Say you're doing a tune like Honeysuckle Rose, uh, which starts on the five seven chord. You may want to end up with uh, a five diminished chord to lead in to the one seven. If uh, you get really experimental, uh, again, like I said before, you run the risk of the uh, uh, of the other musicians not coming in on time. Uh, but above all, be aware of the beginning chord of the tune of the chorus, so that the final chord you play is the setup chord for that chord. Um, for example, say you're going to do a like a wild chromatic thing. Okay. Now, uh, that might be a little too uh, a little too far out for some musicians to actually feel where beat one is going to be. Uh, I should mention also that in addition to tunes starting with the um, uh, one chord or the five seven chord, you may get tunes that start uh, with the two chord, and when you do that you've got to set that up uh, with a six chord. For example, uh, 
let's uh, let's play the last eight bars of Tangerine. <laughs> That's another uh, option you have in addition to doing what we call a turnaround, which is what I've been playing so far. Um, you can play the last eight bars or the last four bars of the tune itself. But uh, like I said before, be sure that you set it up with a chord that your band members can hear that will lead you directly in to the start of the first chorus.